Hello everyone and welcome to another Mac Merlin stream, another episode, <clears throat> excuse me there, of Porting with Ports. Today's drink, of course, is Draft Mead from Author Co. And this is apparently rosé flavored. Check that out. Come on, camera. Focus in on the mead instead of my face. <laughs> Here, let's switch to the other camera. Hopefully that will be much better. There we go. Draft Mead. This is another Washington company. I feel like I've shown this on stream before. I've been trying to drink alcohol from local breweries and all that. This one is located in Vancouver, Washington. If you guys don't know where Vancouver, Washington is, Vancouver is roughly half an hour drive north of Portland, Oregon. Mr. Pirulito says, bubble tea? No, not tonight. No, not tonight. Um, if you're new to the stream, this stream is all about, or this particular stream is all about taking boards that are not in QMK and putting them into QMK and into VIA. That entire process is called porting, and I figured I might as well have fun with the title of the stream by calling it Porting with Ports, in which I drink port. But over the past year, I feel like I've gone through all the port at my local grocery store, so now I'm trying to <laughs> drink something different. <laughs> something different. So yeah, this, this is Author Mead Co's Draft Mead Rosé Flavored. Let's turn on some music as I pour this. Here we go. Yeah. Um, these are fairly expensive actually. Four four cans of these cost me roughly 14 bucks plus tax. So not not cheap. But it is really good. There we go. Still got a little bit left in the can, but we'll stop it at that. Mm -mm. Okay. A little bit more. And there we go. Perfect. Looks pretty much like a fizzy rosé, which is probably what it actually will taste like. <laughs> Alright, so if you guys run the build command, you'll know that I'm actually revisiting an old PCB. This is one of the first PCBs that I assisted in importing into QMK. Let me grab it for you guys. Here it is. The 1UP60 RGB. Check it out. Check it out. This is actually from, I'd say way back in 2017 is when I first got this board. I was assisting a gentleman named Rampire, who at the time I think worked or helped out at 1UP Keyboards. And yeah, we were, we were successful. Right here, let me talk a little bit more about this PCB. This is a PCB currently retailing for 40 bucks. It's fully programmable, of course. RGB underglow, it's got, um, Oh look, he still says key remapping with QMK and KB firmware when it's supposed to be VIA right now. It has a USB-C port and all the usual stuff. Check it out, 40 bucks, not bad. I'd say this is probably the competitor to the DZ60. And unfortunately, they're not in stock quite often. <laughs> but as I was saying, Take a look at my PCB, guys. It's got a mini US, uh, a mini B USB port. Just because I've owned this for such a long time, they have since updated the PCB. Even though they've updated the PCB, it's still the same firmware. So regardless if you have the one with the USB mini B or the new one with the USB C port, the firmware will be just the same. No problem. Let's see. Who's online tonight anyway? I see a Hove, I see a Mr. Pirulito, and I see a Gavin. Gavin Go, thanks guys for joining in. Yeah, tonight, due to some requests from the community, um, I've been doing ma mainly just via ports lately, but people wanted to see how the entire process was done. And I was like, hmm, it's been a while since I've got a new PCB in. Why don't I revisit a PCB that's 
relatively easy to do. So I figured, why not start where it began? <laughs> All right, so this port is actually already done. This was done quite some time ago. If you guys look on QMK right now, QMK's GitHub, which I'll be linking in chat, you'll see that this board was first done two years ago. At least that's what the oldest file is two years ago. And there has been some updates here and there, like someone updated the 1up60rgb.h file 28 days ago. But in most cases, it's about six months old. Yeah. Mr. Pirulito says, this is like programming. It's similar to PHP. It's not really programming at all. We've automated the process so much that you don't have to do much coding. It's mainly just copy and pasting and counting from like one to 10, <laughs> which you guys will see. So yeah, this, this is already all done, but we are just gonna take a step back and attempt to do it without looking at the code. All right. So the first place I like to go to is open up Keyboard Layout Editor. Keyboard Layout Editor is a popular tool in the community. This is used to design key sets and sometimes plates. Um, it's actually a very outdated tool as well, unfortunately. The person who maintains the site hasn't updated it since, I'd say 2018. So what you see here will probably never change. He's also put it under certain licenses, so no one in the community can quote unquote legally take the code, make their own and update it. That would be forbidden. But regardless, let's just get started here. Um, since this is a 60% board, I like to go up here to preset and pick default 60% like this. And I like to click on tools, click on remove all legends and clear it out just like that. What will I be doing with this? Um, assuming you've got a PCB, which you should, if you're gonna do any kind of QMK programming, um, you need a PCB and you need a multimeter. If you guys wanna know how to do this, make sure you check out my YouTube video on tracing the switch matrix. Basically what I do is I flip it over so that I can see the microcontroller and basically see how each of the keys are connected. Let's make sure it beeps first. getting some beeping here it's odd this work for any personal custom PCB yes it does if you make your own this is the same process well if you made your own PCB you shouldn't need to do this because you already know how it's all connected up but what I'm doing here is basically just looking for continuity and I don't seem to be getting any of that right now for some odd reason so let me figure out what's going on uh, okay why is that not working Okay, so basically what you're trying to do here is you're trying to figure out how the columns are connected to each other and how the rows are connected to each other. Typically speaking, if you design your PCB correctly, all these switches right here will be one row. So you would be, actually I can provide that example right now. You can see that one leg of the switch is connected to a diode and that diode is then connected to another diode Let's get this right. Uh-oh. 
Oh. Yeah, this is probably like one of the harder parts here. You're trying to find out how everything is connected. Hmm. Okay. There you go, that's what's happening. So the way that the 1UP60 RGB is built is that across the physical row here, one leg of the switch is connected to each other. So, so you can check for continuity like that. And to do the columns, one leg of the switch is connected to a diode and then the diode is connected to another diode. It goes like that. So basically, you want to map this out because there is no way you can keep all this information in your head, which takes us back to Keyboard Layout Editor. So the way I mark this stuff down is, of course, I have a Atmega32U4 pinout diagram, and I just label it. For example, I usually label the bottom legend with row number and the top legend over here with column number. That's what I do. So I just, or not, not column number, but column, column pin. It's called call P. And the bottom one is row P for row pin. And this is what I do throughout the entire board. And since I don't want to spend the next half hour doing this for you guys, I actually did it already. <laughs> Here we go. This is it, this is what it looks like. So what you're looking here is this, this switch, this, this escape key is connected to pin D0 and F0 on the microcontroller. That's what this means. So I've done this already for the entire board. So you have a few questions going on on stream. Gavin says, Merlin, I'm thinking of getting the KBD67 V2, not sure PC or ALU case to get. What will the sound signature be for both? Um. Well, the PC is going to sound more thockier, I believe, because it's plastic. And the aluminum will sound like most other KBD67s out there. Mr. Pibolito says, this is because you don't know the connectivity of the PCB. So you can customize this with columns and rows through the miracle of TV. <laughs> yeah. So basically... You're not customizing the pins. This is this is basically the this is how it is. This is how the switches are all connected. You cannot change this without changing the actual hardware, which means you will probably have to make a new PCB. This is just me figuring out how each of these guys how each of these guys are connected to the microcontroller. So that's what it is. Each of these pins that you see are pins on the microcontroller itself. So once you have this information, um, I talked earlier on stream that a lot of the processes are now automated, so you don't really have to do very much. Um, case in point, there is a popular tool created by Mr. Keebs. He is another streamer located in Brazil. Um, he has a tool called KLE to QMK. KLE to QMK dot Mr. Keebs dot com, which I'll post in the stream, the stream chat really quick. And this is fairly easy to use. It asks for KLE raw data. So you want to go back to your KLE right here. Click on raw data. You see all this information? Copy it. Paste it and press convert. What this tool will do is tell you what the row pins are. So you can see it's D0 up to D5, 
then you have F0, F1, E6, so forth and so on for the column pins. And he also gives you a little snippet of code here. Right here, right? And we will talk about this in just a bit. But yeah, this is pretty much, the, this is the meat of the QMK firmware. Once you have this done, you're probably 80% of the way through. And as you can see, we haven't done any coding. If you watch any of my earlier streams, probably from early 2019 where I'm doing this, I'm literally still coding. But these days, like, what did I do? I just traced, traced the matrix, copied this, pasted it, and pressed the convert button, you know? So the next thing that I need to do is actually copy this and put it into QMK. So let's just copy it for now, keep it in our paste buffer. The next part is a little more difficult. Um, if you don't know how to set up a QMK environment, I would suggest you read through the docs. It's significantly more difficult on Windows than it is on a Mac OS system, like, like what I have here. So assuming you have your QMK environment set up, it's just, a, it's just a matter of opening up QMK and pasting this code in. So let's do that really quick. Let's go set that up. All right. What I have here is basically just a terminal that's opened up to QMK firmware and I've and I have it checked out to master right now. This is the most up-to-date version of QMK firmware. There are so many ways you can do this. So first thing I would do is go to the util directory. In the util directory, you'll see something like where is it? new keyboard.sh you know, this is a new, this is basically like a script that you can execute. Um, or the better way to do that is to use the new QMK CLI. So basically type in QMK slash dash dash help and you'll see a bunch, a bunch of information right here asking you what to do and all that. See, so right here you've got some subcommands. You've got clone, setup, compile, config, doctor, flash, info, JSON, 2C, list keyboard, list keymap, new keymap. Um, before we get started, let's type in QMK doctor to make sure that your environment is all set up. You type in QMK doctor and QMK is ready to go. Perfect. That, that's what I like to like to see. And as you can see, there's actually no QMK new keyboard. So unfortunately, we still have to run the new keyboard script. Since this board is already in QMK, um, I don't want to override what's there. So I'm just going to make a, I'm just going to call it test. Test, right? So as soon as you type in dot slash new keyboard dot dot sh, press enter and it'll ask you for a keyboard name. So just type in test. Keyboard type AVR. Um, usually, if you don't know what to put in here, well, if you design the PCB and you're writing firmware for yourself, you should already know what you picked, but you can typically tell what microcontroller you have by reading what's printed on it. So I'm definitely not gonna be able to properly show this to you guys, but you know, if you can see there's some printing on that microcontroller that is at Mega32U4, which is an AVR chip. So it's, it's already populated for you. So just press enter and it's gonna ask you for your name. This is the name that it's gonna put in the code. So by default, it grabs it from your GitHub profile or whatever you put in your Git config. So I, Apparently I am Mech Merlin, all lowercase, but I like capital M's in mine. So I'm just gonna put that there. And look at it, created a new keyboard in test. So now when you go into the keyboards directory, there is a new keyboard called test. Drakshna says, oh, an actual porting stream. Yeah, I know, people have been asking how to do it. 
here. So here we go. So yeah, so we now have a new keyboard called test, right? And this is all just like vanilla cookie cutter stuff. Let's increase my font size so you guys can actually read it. You can see everything is just generic, right? Completely generic here. All that stuff. All this is already generated for you, right? Keep in mind at this point, I still haven't coded anything. All I've done is execute one command, one command on the terminal, right? That's all that, right? So, so, so the first thing that I recommend you doing is going to your readme.md. Look at that, it says test. Imgur.com image, replace me. Put an appropriate link in here. If you don't have a link to your image, delete it. Delete it. Um, put in an appropriate description. For now, let's, let's just call it test keyboard. Um, for keyboard maintainer, make sure your name is there. And if you have a GitHub, which you should, make sure you have your GitHub name put in there as well. In terms of hardware supported, basically just talk about the PCB, PCB version, whatever, you know, all that stuff. And for hardware availability, you want to put in the link. So in our case, the link for 1UP60 RGB, let me pull that up, is actually on the 1UP60 website. So all this is written in Markdown, so you just want to do 1UP60 RGB, like so. And if you have a Markdown renderer, you can execute that, and you can see how everything shows up really nicely and all that. Um, feel free to add any other information that you want here, but that's that's pretty much it. Mr. P. Relito says, where can I find that code? Um, the code's already all done. It's on the QMK github let me post the actual address to you right there that's on chat yeah all, all this is already done we're just taking a look back at it and all that all right all right so let's go back to the mr keeves tool right here what you want is this guy right here. Actually, you need quite a few of these. First, you want your row pins. Let's copy that. Copy the row pins D0, D1, D2, D3, D5. And what you want to do is go to your config.h right here. And populate here. Just copy and paste once again. Now let's grab the column pins. Oops. Let's grab the column pins, which is a even longer string right there. Once again, copy and paste. And make sure on lines 30 and 31, this matrix row and columns that you actually populate that correctly. So how many rows do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five. Put five there. How many columns do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Five by sixteen. There we go. Five by sixteen. And you know, this is one part that I always mess up in, so I'm just gonna count in my head again just to make sure I've got the right number. Okay, that's good. Five by 16. So at, at this point, the only new thing we've done to port this into QMK is counting. <laughs> we've copy and pasted and we've counted. The next thing you wanna do is go to your keyboards.h file. And in our case, the name of the keyboard is test. So you wanna go to test.h. Um, what you see here is the pre-generated code. In QMK, we call this the layout macro. 
Um, the layout macro consists of two parts, the top half and the bottom half. The bottom half is known as the electrical matrix, and the top half is known as the physical matrix. Um, each of these elements here, K00, K12, K02, what does that actually mean? K stands for key, the first number stands for the row number, and the second stands for the column number. How does that relate? If you go back to config.h, the file that we just edited, you'll see that we have a bunch of rows and a bunch of columns. To make it more explicit, I like to label them. So put a comment there. And you definitely want to do this because you'll be doing lots of counting later and you don't want to screw up your counting like I normally do. Like so. Okay, so going back to that, K01 stands for the key that is located in row zero, column one. So in this case, we would be looking at row zero, which is D0, column one, F1 the key connected to pins D0 and F1. Like the same thing can be done everywhere here. Like for example, let's do K10. K10 would be the key located at, or connected to pin D1 and F0. All right, it's time to take this, this layout macro that Mr. Keeps generated for us and do another copy and paste. Go back to your test.h and boom, just like that. See? So let's talk about that mapping again. You can see K00 is up here. K00 stands for the key that is connected to pins D0 and F0. And if you look back at our keyboard layout editor, you'll see that that is indeed the case. F0 and D0. Let's see, F1 and D0, E6, D0, just it's like the same thing over and over again, like so. So we've got all of that in place. Um, at this point, the next step is to actually put in your key map. So I'm pretty lazy. You know, I don't like to, to do my key map by hand. So I like to go into QMK and borrow what's already there. Let's see, let's borrow Let's borrow a 60% keyboard's key map by going into layouts, default, let's do 60 ANSI, and let's go to static H says, do you ever use the matrix tester in VIA to confirm? Uh, do we need, okay, so by the time I get there, like VIA happens can only be done once the QMK firmware is is actually finished. So it's kind of like to even get to VIA, you need to make sure that your matrix works. So it's it's kind of like going backwards if I were to do it in VIA. Okay, so you want to go to default 60 ANSI. Let's borrow a nice key map right there. Just copy the whole file. Like so, oh, let's not copy the 2020 GitHub. And you wanna to go to your key maps, to your key map directory. Let's take it all out. Take out all of this code that was pre-generated for you. You don't really need it. Just copy and paste it, just like that. And at this point, you should be done. You should be done with QMK Formar. Let's see, when did we start? When did we start the stream? 7.30? It's now 8 o'clock? That was half an hour. Granted, I did skip the matrix tracing part. I just kind of already pre-did pre, pre did that. But here, let's, um, let's open up a terminal. Let's, let's open up a terminal output. By the way, if you guys are wondering, I'm using VS Code as my, as my editor here. Make sure in, you're in your QMK directory and issue the command make test 
colon default because the name of the key map is default. If you guys look up here, the key map.c is under the default directory. And if I did this correctly, which I'm pretty sure there's a, there's like a mistake here or there, things should compile. Wait, what? Why did that not compile? Oh, did I not set it here? Drakshna says that's not true. It can be done in via first. Um, how? You don't have via without the firmware. You can have a via JSON, but you can't, you don't actually have via until you have QMK firmware. Let's see, what did I do wrong here? Why am I not compiling? Keyboards test. See, I'm. Hold on. Why am I not compiling properly here? <laughs> Here, let's let's compile a board that I know to exist, like the GH60 Rev C colon default. There you go. That's compiling. So why is my test keyboard not compiling? Is it because I named it test and we have something something else with test done? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Let's try renaming it to something else. Let's rename it. <laughs> test is not a legal target. Okay, great. Maybe I should have called it just test keep. Here, let's, let's do it. Test cube. There we go. We just called it test cube. we go test cube um so when you rename it you need to make sure that the underlying files are also named properly let's call it test cube not tet cube but test cube.c and test cube.h um and make sure you have the right files here test cube.h okay i think i think that should be good we should be able to compile it again. Make test keep colon default. And as I said earlier, I'm pr pretty sure there are some some mistakes here. But we'll we'll see. Ah yes, okay. One thing I forgot to mention is that in your test keep.h file. Whoa, it disappeared. What the heck? Here, let me copy and paste. Yeah, I think something got messed up when I was organizing that. So let me redo part of that.
Oh yeah. So what I forgot to mention is whatever you call your layout macro here, um, QMK suggests that you do layout underscore and you disc and you call it like 60 ANSI or something descriptive like so. Whatever you call it here, this needs to match in your keymap.c when you attempt to use it like so. Right? So now hopefully that compiles. See, Chill Rise says, Yo, Merlin, question Can you add two different GBs in one order at Kono? Um, that might be something you want to ask Kono. Stupak says, The other day you recommend I look at Gadinx. I'm going to say I think I like the sound slightly better than Alpaca's, both lubes, so thank you. Um, Gat Inks are one of my favorite switches, actually. Let's see, we do have one error here missing parentheses in macro parameter. Uh, okay, let's see if we can fix this up a bit. Let's see. What are we missing here? We need a... I think we can take out that. Mm -mm. This is always like the fun part, trying to figure out what, what the compiler is actually telling you to do. <laughs> Let's see, what else? What else do we need to do here? I think we can take out that comma. Backslash and new line separation. Interesting. Mr. P. Belito says, I have a question. When I'm flashing a Lily 50, I need to flash the two PCBs or just connect the two with the TRSS and flash both at the same time. Um, I don't know, actually. Do both of them have a microcontroller? Let's see. What am I missing here? I am missing... Let's see. Basically, I'm opening up another QMK file and just comparing what's missing because it's so weird but I'm missing like one stupid comma or something like that Aha, I think I found it. Let's try again. Please work. There we go. It's working. It's working. And yeah, there we go. We've got, we have QMK firmware now. There we go. That, that took a grand total of 39 minutes to do. And we did not do any coding, basically just a bunch of copy and pasting and counting and adding in commas. <laughs> Bacon and Tuna subscribed at tier one. Thank you so much, man. Let's see. Yeah. So that's it. That's pretty much it. All right. So the next thing to do is to actually test that you did this correctly, right? So here we go. Moment of truth, flashing what you just created on your PCB. And let me, let me grab the appropriate cable for this since this is the older 1UP60 RGB, it's still using the mini USB-B. So we got one of these. Like so. So hopefully, Hopefully the PCB that you have has an actual reset button like this one does right there. So it should be super simple, super simple on how this is done. OK, 
Okay, we just confirmed that the PCB works. Hooray. Okay. So let's go back. Let's go back to the code. Here, let's see if I can organize something here. Actually, here. Let's go back to the code. What you want to do... What you want to do is press the reset button. Let's press it now. The board's in reset. If you have Mac OS, you can just run this from the command line. Make test keep colon default colon flash. And once you've reset it, just pressing enter should do the trick. And you can see from the output here, the, the flash was done. Perfect. Okay. Uh, thing I always like to do is unplug and replug. Like so. Unplug, replug, and we are going to short it. Let's go short it. Let's pull up your favorite. Let's go pull up our favorite key tester. In my case, I like to use, here we go, QMK configurator for testing. And yeah, hopefully I did this right, guys. There we go. Yeah, the PCB is upside down because the port's here, but I guess it would help if I just flipped it around like so. Yeah, every time you make firmware, just make sure that you test your PCB. You should test the whole thing, as I most recently learned. As you guys know, I tried to port the split 75, and I had much difficulty. Oh, look. That guy's not really... Oh, here we go. We got him. We got him. Uh-oh. Shoe key. Can you zoom the desktop? Sure. Let's see. I'm gonna have to zoom in. I'm having to do this through the menu bars because if I press the actual macro key, it's just gonna trigger it. All right. Looks like my Q key is not triggering. Uh-oh. We'll get back to it later. That Q key seems to be off. So does that A key. Ooh. I may be off by an entire column here, guys. Which we can check out later. No problem. Yeah, I think I'm off by a column here, guys. Did not do the tracing all that accurately. Maybe because I did it way too fast. <laughs> but we can fix that. No biggie.
All right. What does the red colored mean? It means um, chatter has been detected. So chatter is basically, it's called switch chatter actually. Um, if, the, if the leaves inside your switch aren't properly formed, if it's bent too much in one way and not the other, what can happen is on a single key press, it can trigger it multiple times. So this is what this is saying. The W and the pipe key are red, meaning that it was touched once and it triggered multiple times. So on an actual key switch like so, that's bad. That means you need to swap out the switch. When you're doing this yourself, um, with like tweezers, it just means that you are not stable that your fingers are not as stable as a mechanical switch. Yeah, it's like very few people can actually hold it super steady that when they trigger a switch, it only registers once. Sometimes you're like shaking, you know? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so the way we're looking at right now, this means that I screwed up one of the columns here and probably the enter key and the right control, which it's not a problem. It's not a problem. I just have to go back to my KLE over here. There we go. I just have to go back to my KLE over here and rethink what I put in these switches right here. E7, D1. Um, I'm going to cheat. Normally, the way you would rectify this is to take your multimeter and do it again. Just do those switches again. Make sure that each pin is connected to the microcontroller correctly. But as I said, this board is actually already done. So I'm going to take a little peek at the 1UP60 RGB. So from the looks of it, it says that Q, A, and Z are 1, 2, 2, 2, and 3, 2. Here, let's go look at that again. Q, A, and Z are 1, 2, 2, 2, and 3, 2, this column right here. So now we just want to look at the config file. 1, 2 is D1, E6. D2 E6 and D3 E6. How does that compare? Look at that. We got the row correct, but the actual column is wrong. Right? It's supposed to be E6. That that will cause problems for us. Let me make sure you check that out. Um, usually these these pins on the microcontroller are so tiny that making mistakes like this is actually quite common. And the other one was the enter key was F4D2, right? So let's look back at the code. F4D2 was it's 2E, right? Sorry, let's go look here because you want the layout 60 ANSI right there. That's 2E. What is 2E? 2E is D2, and I, I just have to count here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. A, B, C, D, E, F4. So it's D2, F4, which is correct. Hmm, something's a little wrong here. Let's try and trigger that again. Let's try and trigger that again. Because I could have sworn that enter wasn't working. Let's try it again. Because based on this, it's telling me that it's correct. Hello. Hello, Mr. PCB. PCB is not working. Hmm. 
Hmm, something is wrong with the PCB. Here, let's check the right control. Here we go. Let's take a look at, sorry, this one again. Right control is K4E. So that should have been D5F4. And that's still correct. Okay, with that being said, I wonder if my PCB is actually broken because this code works. So I wonder if my PCB is actually broken at those points. Which would make sense because their columns are the same. So, hmm, hmm. I could have a broken PCB at that point. But to be absolutely sure, what I'm gonna do is flash the actual, like the legit firmware on it. And we'll see what happens there. Mr. Pirulito says, there's a pro micro on each PCB, then yes, you will need to eat flash each half. Okay, let's reset this again. Press the reset button. And we are going to flash it with the original firmware. Flashing it right now while I drink the rest of my mead. flashed perfect let's unplug and plug it back in just to be absolutely sure let's let's reset this reset it right there let's test that enter key again Control. All right. Yep. I think my this particular PCB is dead at those two locations. Yep. It's dead. Tosco says, "Would a multimeter help?" Um. Yes, it would. If you want to be absolutely sure that those are the are, are the two pins. Here, so what you want to do, um, let's see, what, what did I find? I found that they share the same column. So that means I should be able to do this. Check out that column. All right, there seems to be a break between the two columns, between the enter key and the actual control key. Okay, column part's broken. Okay, well, I'm not surprised. This is a very old board from 2017. I think, if I can remember correctly, I think 1UP sent this to me as a, as a prototype of sorts. I can't quite remember since it was so, so long ago. But rest assured, if you buy another one of these from 1UP keyboards, especially since it has a USB-C port, as you guys can see, 
um, this firmware should absolutely work. But yeah, I guess that brings me to the next point. Even if you write your firmware perfectly, if your board's busted, there's really nothing much you can do about it. <laughs> Mr. Pilito says, yeah, it's, it's Borkin. Yeah, absolutely, it's Borkin. But yeah, that was a very fast port. Very fast port. One thing that I did not mention is how to do your RGBs. Sometimes you will find a board with RGB underglow like this. And in order to know what's happening, you need to come up with the data sheet for these guys. This guy is called the WS28, I think it was a 2811. Let's see. I see a couple of people following. Thanks guys. I see a deterrent, mofunzone, olive oil. Thanks guys. Mr. Pibu Hilito says, I can do QMK on any key. You can do it with most enthusiast keys and some OEM boards. Basically, the main requirement is that the microcontroller needs to be supported. So basically, if you go on QMK, if you go on the documentation, there's a list of supported microcontrollers, such as the Atmega 32U4, Atmega 32A, um, Atmega 328P, and a couple other ARM microcontrollers. But typically, if it has that, your chances of getting QMK on it are upped significantly. But don't expect to put QMK on a Razer. So if you can figure out how, you're going to be a hero. Everyone's gonna love you. <laughs> Sark says, couple of arm. Well, I just know it's STM32 something or another. But as I was saying, to do the, to do the RGBs, you are going to need to open up a, let's see, let's do this. A pinout diagram. So the way these controllers go is that they're kind of like in series, kind of like your Christmas tree lights, right? Um, one pin is the input to another, and so forth and so on. So you just have to figure out which one is which. So in this case, you can test this out really quick. It would really help if I pulled up a pin out first. So let's see. Let's go see a pin out over here. Ah, okay, I see. So the way this works, make sure you align it with your pin. Um, here we go. D in is there. So that would be. There we go. So the output of this guy is going into the next. And typically what you want to do is you want to find the first one. And once you find the first RGB LED, you can then take the input of that and map it to the microcontroller. So in this case, the, if you actually look at the PCB, you'll see that the RGBs are labeled. So chances are you just have to look for RGB1. And RGB1 is... That's really weird. That's RGB 20. Why is it labeled RGB 20? There's not 20 RGBs on this. 
There's 16 RGBs. Why is it labeled RGB 20? That's so weird. <laughs> okay, I'm assuming RGB... Oh, it starts at 3. Okay, so I would assume that you would want the input of that. So put put your multimeter on the input of the RGB and figure out which pin on the microcontroller it is. Is it the input or was it the output? Here, let's check. These are really, really tiny, so sometimes your multimeter doesn't trigger it. Yeah, okay, so I have just determined that even though it's RGB3, which is the smallest RGB, it's not actually where it starts. But typically speaking, if you put your pin on where it's where the input is, um, you should be able to map it out to something on the microcontroller. So let's just, I'm just gonna assume that maybe it's RGB20. Let's try that one. can't seem to find it right now but if you look at the code config you'll see that the RGB pin is actually E2 that RGB pin is E2 and the backlight pin is B6 Chris Kart says did you already build a custom cable no I have not Mr. Pirulito says, when you do a new new key map, do I need to flash the key again, but with the document of the new key map? Um, so the way QMK firmware works is the firmware itself contains the key map. So every time you change your key map, you need to flash new firmware, which is one reason why VIA is very, very popular. Um, VIA has separated the firmware from the key map. So whenever you change your key map, you really just have to open up VIA, change your key map there, and it'll dynamically change it for you. Um, you will only ever have to, up to update the firmware when there's like a bug fix or when there's like a new feature. Yeah, so basically that's that's how you get stuff into QMK. Um, majority of the work, I believe like the hardest part is knowing your circuit diagrams actually, just by using this. Using your multimeter, knowing how each of the switches are connected, how each of the RGB underglows are connected. And in terms of backlight, like a backlight is usually connected to resistors and to MOSFETs. So once you figured that out as well, um, you can finally do the QMK firmware. See, VimWire subscribed to Tier 1. Thank you so much. Subscribe for two months. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. But yeah, a lot of people have been asking me, Merlin, can you update? Can, can you update your um, series on YouTube? And I'm like, oh yeah, I definitely should. Definitely should, just to break down each of these steps one by one. But as you guys can see, it's pretty much a 30 minute process. You know, um, admittedly, I've been doing this for a long time. So the process comes naturally to me. I don't, I don't necessarily have to think very hard. But as you guys have seen, as you guys have seen, it's mainly just copy and paste. Co copy and paste and counting, being like, okay, which one do I copy? I need to copy the fifth one. So I have to count one, two, three, four, five, copy, and that's it, right? But yeah, the most difficult part is using this multimeter. Though I do have to tell you that once you're able to use this multimeter correctly, your knowledge of PCB design or how a PCB can come together increases. Like you may not necessarily know how to build a PCB like this, but you will know how each of these components are connected and all that. The, the next step of course is to learn how to do PCB design. That is a step that I have neglected for the longest time. It's funny because a lot of budding PCB designers have asked me questions on how it should be put together and I'm like, ah, you need to do this, 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 and this. And sure, sure, sure enough, like three months later or so, they're like, oh Merlin, I just made my first PCB, thanks for your help. And I'm like, I don't know how to make a PCB, I just know the schematics. <laughs> but, but of course, I'm like, yes, yes, young Padawan, you have learned well. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, what, one of these days I will learn how to make a PCB and who knows, Mac Merlin 60 coming up in the near future. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if I can actually do it. I think, I think the major roadblock for me is not necessarily making the, the schematic because I can do that. I can do that very, very well. It's using the tool, be, be it KiCad or whatever popular program is out there and using it to actually get all the measurements correct, make sure each switch is spaced out equidistant from each other, um, that you have a staggered layout and the PCB that I make will actually fit in the case that it's designed for. So yeah, so that, so that is something that I need to learn how to do still. Um, yeah, maybe if I got time in the future. Olivia says, wait, wasn't your hat thing a PCB? The hat thing was a prototype that Scully Dazed made for me. It was, uh, it was a project for the upcoming, it was a project that was supposed to be for the Seattle meetup, but we didn't actually have a prototype until after the Seattle meetup. <laughs> but yeah, who knows? Maybe, maybe that project will, we'll see, a, we'll see the light of day. Who knows? Who knows? But yeah, this this process is fairly simple. It took about 30 mi 39 minutes to do this. The next step though, it's a little bit more complicated. We're not done here. We are not done here at all. So let's bring up, let's bring up the code. Let's bring up the code really quick. Here we go. Um, there was a file here called info.json. What is this? This is the JSON file that QMK Configurator consumes and is able to give you all the layouts, all that good stuff. You know? So the way to do this, we'll have to step back into Keyboard Layout Editor. So here, let's go back to Keyboard Layout Editor really quick. Here we go. We can take the raw file right here. All that good stuff, right? And once again, this is all automated for you. You just have to know where to go to get this automation in place. The place you need to go to is called qmk.fm slash converter, like so. You can take that raw file 
and paste it in the input. Press convert. And voila, you have an info.json file. So once again, this is another exercise in copy and pasting. Super simple right there. Copy and paste, boom, it's done, it's done. How do you know that this actually works, right? How do you know this actually works? You can go to QMK configurator, like so. Then you have to press the super secret key code. And you'll only know about it if you watch this stream. It'll give you absolute power. It, it will allow you to enter group buys that you normally can't. It might even let you win a key cult. <laughs> but the super secret key code or key combination is control, shift, and I. And what this does, it this brings up a finder or like a, a, um, let's say a dialog box that lets you look for that info.json that you just created. So if you navigate to it, and if you did this correctly, QMK configurator should show exactly what you did in KLE. So if I did this correctly, which I should have, because it was li literally just a simple copy and paste, right? Boom, boom. That is exactly what I made in, in like keyboard layout editor, right? Oh, here we go. That's good, that's good. One thing you have to remember though, one thing you have to remember, let's go back to the code really quick you'll see that you have another layout name here. Make sure, you have to absolutely make sure that this matches what is in your .h file and it also matches what is in your key map or one of your key maps at least. So let's just make sure that the name is correct. Josh, I said it's a good thing it's not documented. <laughs> Yeah, here we go, here we go. So that's like the last thing that you need to do. If you notice though, if, if, if you were just to go to config to like QMK configurator, you'll notice that there are quite a few, what's taking so long here? There we go. That there are quite a few layouts here, especially if you pick a board like, let's pick the GH60. You'll see that there's quite a few layouts here. You're like Merlin, what's all that? Oh, a good thing to ask. All those, all those particular layouts are in relation to what you define in your .h file. In our test key case, we've only really defined one layout, but you want to define one of these per layout or per popular layout. Because if you, if you actually try to do all the layouts supported on your board, you end up with a, mon with a monstrosity like this. For example, take the S7 elephant. Look at all that. Look at all that. Look at all that. Like imagine, imagine if you are a user and you're trying to use this, like sure, it's not exactly a, a big effort to choose the layout that, that best suits you, but this can be complicated, right? This can be complicated. But you wanna try your best to create one layout per, like you wanna create one layout macro per layout. And this can be like 10 layout macros long. And once you do this, this needs to be appropriately reflected in here too, you know? And the way, you, like, the way that's done is for example, if you want a layout that's just split shift, then you need to do this. You need to go there, add another key, like so. Figure out what pins it's like connected to. And once you figure that out, do the whole copy and paste raw into the QMK converter thing and paste that resulting file or that resulting portion into your info.json. So you do that for like 10 times, 15 times and it can get fairly messy, 
And it's not exactly the best user experience right there, you know? Like, Droshna says, still not as bad as the DZ60. Let's look at the DZ60. DZ60, keyboard from, K from KBD fans. There is so many of them. This is, this is confusing. This is confusing. Um, I feel like, I think this board can support 30 layouts. Imagine having to scroll through 30 of these. Not, not particularly difficult, but annoying, absolutely. This, this sucks in, in like many ways. Um, earlier we were having a, a discussion about VIA, how in, if you use QMK configurator or if you make the firmware yourself, you need to flash your keyboard every single time. One of the benefits of VIA is that you only have to flash updates to firmware, but changing your key map can be done through the app super, super easily. Another benefit of VIA is that you don't have to pick a layout. You don't have to pick a particular layout. You can simply declare what layout you want. Let me bring up VIA really quick here. I'm gonna show you an example of that right here. So what I have right now is my KBD67 V2 Mark II RGB. And I know I said that wrong, there's like so many different names, but yeah, it's, it's this board right here that I just recently rebuilt. So this is VIA right here. You can go to your, oh wait, I just realized that this is a hot swap board, so there's only one layout. Let me, let me actually put in a board that has multiple layouts, like, like an iron. Let's do an iron. All right. There we go. Olivia, if you're still on, I actually put GMK Olive on my iron and it turned out really, really good. Here, let me show you. Here it is. Here it is. Woo! GMK Olive on the iron 165 SE. There we go. And let's, let me just show a quick example of how VIA works versus QMK configurator. There we go. This is the Iron 165. Like so. And earlier I mentioned, you can just go to layouts, right? Look, what if you want split backspace? Easy. You want, you want ANSI or ISO? No problem. That needs to be renamed. I don't like how it's just enter key. Split left shift. Sure, you can split it, no problem. Sang in bottom row. Sure. Okay. If you were gonna do this in QMK configurator, um, this, this thing that I just did would be one layout. That would be another 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 layout. Do you, do you guys see this? You guys see this? So in QMK Configurator to, to represent what you want, um, the programmer would have had to put at least five different layouts for it. So this is great. This is great. And, and you can easily do this through VIA. Let's see, Olivia says, good news is that the layouts will show in the designer tab in the next release. Thank you so much. That will be, that will actually solve a lot of my issues. Um, to be honest, a couple people have asked me, Merlin, Merlin, can you put VIA on one of my boards for me? And I explained to them that I could use the physical hardware so I can test that the layouts work. And they're like, oh, I have to send you my board. I'm like, yeah, sure. That would actually simplify my work. And they're asking me to pay for shipping both ways. And I'm kind of like, so not only am I doing work for you, I'm also 
paying money so I can do work for you. And they're like, yeah. Mm, that's a really hard sell. I don't think I'm going to do it. <laughs> so with something like this, <laughs> with that with that new release that Olivia is talking about, I can actually put VIA on people's boards without them having to ship boards to me. Like, ultimately having them ship a board to me is is 100% guaranteed that the test will be done correctly. Like, I, I can test every single thing, but, you know. <laughs> Drosh says Merlin can't bit shift. Oh gosh, I spent years bit shifting. Don't you dare put it on mine, says Zark. <laughs> I'll put Via on every board that can be Viafied. <laughs> Alright. Speaking of Via. Speaking of Via. The next stage of this of this port is actually putting Via in. Let's do that. Let's do that really quick. Let's go back and look and look at our code here. Um, earlier I mentioned that we only had one key map and that one key map was was named default. The way we can do this in Via is to create another key map. Let's and call it Via. Surprise, surprise. Um, actually not just creating another directory. What I like to do, just to simplify the process, is to literally copy and paste the default directory and just rename it via, like so. So you now have a via key map that's pretty much identical to default. And the next thing that you want to do, <laughs> Sniper Bob says viafied new word. Well, there is QMK-fied and there is VIA-fied. There is... Drakna says, Merlin, just pay for shipping to you. Tell them that if they want it back, they can pay for shipping back. <laughs> At double the cost. <laughs> I could, I could. I could do that. All right. So, one thing that you have to have to know about VIA is actually let's bring up via again just because it's a good example if you bring up via you'll notice that only four layers are ever supported right like so so you want to actually demonstrate this when you're writing your firmware there you go um, if you don't populate all four layers of your key map, what's going to happen is the first layer is going to show up correctly. Multimeter is talking to me, telling me to turn it off. And each successive layer is going to have garbage. It could be random information. Who knows? So what I like to do, if you are so lucky, you can actually... You know what? I am going to borrow a key map again. We are going to borrow a key map again here. Let's borrow someone's key map here. By borrowing the key map, I'm actually going to borrow from the original code. Because <laughs> I'm lazy. I'm so lazy when it comes to this. Let's just... This keyboard is already in VIA, so there's not really much more I can do here. Let's just copy it. Here we go, see? All four layers are defined. Actually, why don't I just copy the whole darn thing? Easy peasy, right? There we go, we now have a via key map, like so. All four layers are defined. Um, you'll notice that the next three layers, they are defined, but they are empty. They, they all have the transparent key code on it. One thing I do want to stress is on your first layer or on your second layer, layer one, you want to have at least a reset key. Because opening up your board, pressing the button is very tedious and remembering if you want to hold your escape or your space plus B is even more tedious for like some people. Well, there we go. That's all that, right? The next thing you want to do um, VIA is able to detect your keyboard because it reads two vital pieces of information from your board. 
those two vital pieces of information so that it, it doesn't confuse it with every other board out there is located in your config.h file. It looks, it looks at it via your vendor ID and your product ID. This stuff needs to be unique across QMK. Otherwise, VIA will maybe think that your poker, or I guess not your poker, but your G860 is a one up 60. Who knows, who knows? So this, this needs to be completely unique across QMK. And it also needs to be unique across USB devices. You can actually go on Google and, and search up VID and like, and like a PID database and make sure that none of these have been taken. So we're, we're actually just gonna borrow it from 1up60 because it's already done. No need to do that search again. 1up60 RGB, what did they end up using here? They use 6F75 and 7267. Perfect. We'll just do that, right? Boom. Easy PC. So let's just, let's just make sure that this key map actually can compile. Of course not. Of course it doesn't. Mm. Okay. Okay. I forgot that the default key map in VIA uses the layout all macro. And that's a problem for us because we don't actually have a layout all macro defined. All we have is a layout 60 ANSI, but that's not really a problem because we already have the code. So let's just copy and paste, copy and paste. There, let's go to RGB, 1up60RGB.h. Let's take all that. Copy, paste. Run the compile again. What's this complaining about now? Did you mean X? Oh, okay. Okay, I see what I see what it is now. We need another pound to find. There we go. So we now have a via key map, which we can then flash on our one up 60 RGB again. And that's only half of what it takes to get into VIA. The other half is to also create a JSON file. Um, this is not the same JSON file that is consumed by QMK configurator or by the QMK converter. This is a completely different JSON file. Um, JSON files on QMK configurator will not work on VIA. VIA JSON files will not work on QMK configurator. This is, think of this, this is just another file. It just happens to have a JSON extension. So the next part that I'm going to do is actually also very well documented. You can go to caniusevia.com. Caniusevia.com. Go all the way to the docs, like so. And the docs will tell you what required properties you need for your JSON file. Namely, you need four things, or was it five things, or six things, I can't count. You need your name, you need a vendor and product ID, which I talked about earlier, you need lighting, you need matrix, you need layouts, and yeah, once you've populate all that, you should be good. Where I like to start is actually in the layouts file, or in, in the layouts property, and to get this, we want to take a trip back to keyboard layout editor, like so. Um, in this case, I actually want to encourage you to, you know, make another copy of this. So what we're going to do is just there we go. 
don't throw out your switch matrix stuff because this stuff is actually pretty useful okay so you just want to make sure that you have a 60 percent like so and you're going to do something similar to what you did with this okay okay um, the file we are going to need to pay attention to in order to accomplish this is going to be your .h file, right? Since we're pretty much at a point where the, where the source is actually similar to the code that we're writing, I'm just going to focus on the source here so that I can easily switch between tabs. So what you want to do in your keyboard layout editor is to model what the physical matrix tells you. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, this will be represented all the way here as well. How I like to start things is just populate all of the rows like so. Those two numbers stand for row and column. There we go. Basically, you just want to go through all of this. So this will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, so forth and so on. I'm not going to go through the whole thing because it's going to take me another 30 minutes to do this. So yeah, once you've done this, double check it multiple times just to be absolutely sure do that and you can take that and what's going to happen is I'm actually just going to talk about the files don't necessarily want to make this quite yet are wondering what I'm typing on. That's my Iron 165. It's running Novel Key Silk Yellows right now. So far so good. So far so good. Oh wow, I'm just noticing like all, all that light that I have is making my KBD67 key shine. This is probably my oldest ABS keycap set and I've used this... I used this set daily at work for four years. And it's definitely, it's definitely showing. You guys can see the shine on a lot of the keys, especially on the A, A, S, D, and F keys. It's super shiny right there, especially that E key. I can see that shine. <laughs> yeah, I've had this set since like 2016 or so. No chance RPG says, does VIA firmware use base QMK firmware build for a given keyboard? No, it does not. Base. Base QMK firmware does not have VIA enabled. So you need to flash a QMK firmware that is VIA enabled, and the only place you can get that is to make it yourself or to go to canIUSEVIA.com and download it from the repository. Okay, what was I saying here? So this is where we switch to a different repository. We're no longer in QMK firmware. Um, QMK is run by a group of people. VIA is run by another group of people. Like the chief developer here is, is like Olivia. Let's see. Oh, he says, is it required that a working QMK firmware exists for a board prior to a working VIA firmware? Yes. And Zark says, read the rest of the question. I believe I already answered the question as well. 
because you can't have VIA without QMK because VIA is basically a QMK firmware with VIA enabled. All right, we're just gonna go through here really quick. Here we go. So this is the JSON file that VIA consumes right here, okay? Um, it's got all these properties listed. It's called the 1UP60 RGB. It's got the same vendor and product ID. The lighting is set to QMK backlight RGB light. The rows are five and 15, because there's five rows and 15 columns. And this, this right here is our KLE. This is our KLE file, but it's not the raw, it's the actual JSON. So what you wanna do here, let's go back to, where is it? Where is it? Where did I put that window? There we go. What you wanna do here is you click on raw data and at the bottom right here, and I know it's, a, it's obstructed by my chat, there is a green button called download JSON. Click that, copy the contents of that JSON file, and that is what's pasted in here. All that good stuff. That's what's pasted in there. Um, the next addition is here, layouts, labels. This, this dictates what goes into your layout macro. So for example, let's take a look at this again. Not layout macro, but lay, layout tab. The labels dictate what this bottom half is. Split backspace, enter key, split left shift, sang in bottom row. So the way this works, oh, she was right there. If you have it like this, it's an array with strings in them. The first item here will be the actual label. The next strings within that array will be the dropdown. So you would see backspace and then you'd have a dropdown next to it, which you can click. And once you click on the dropdown, you will see default and split. Um, normally, I think I'm no, I think I'm the one that did this, so I do want to change this. If there's only two options, I would rather it be a toggle rather than a drop down. So the way I would do this is to call it split backspace. I'd take it out of the array like so and do it like that. If I just put it as split backspace, it's going to show up as just quite literally that, right? Just a toggle key. Super simple, just like that. Um, enter key, um, once again, that's ANSI and ISO. We do the exact same thing. Actually, no. Um, I specifically want people to choose between ANSI and ISO. I don't want them to have to toggle it. But this thing right here, split left shift, you want to do that. Split left shift. And it's going to be the same here, split right shift. Split right shift. And bottom row, bottom row, it's not a toggle because there's actually three different things that you can support. So we'll leave it like that. So that's the way you do all, all of the labeling. See, no chance RPG says, if someone checks in a borked QMK firmware to GitHub, does VIA automatically inherit that borked firmware? Um, if, if they were to have a VIA key map with the QMK firmware, okay. So the way this works is usually when you, when you file a when you have a new keyboard that you that you've written firmware for for you need to send it to QMK QMK will check that that it's got like the right 
syntax, it's got the right format, stuff is written as we expect it to be, the key map makes sense, there's no funky or like crazy code in there, and that's how we review it. Um, whether or not you actually did the matrix correctly, or if you missed a few keys here and there, is not something we can check ourselves unless we have the board. So that's really on the programmer, right? Um, so once that is done, you then want to do another PR into VIA. So keep in mind, this is a this is a completely different repo, right? Um, see here, let let me just show you. Sorry, hold on. Let's do. Yeah, here we go. See that? It's a completely different repo. It's at the hyphen via slash keyboards. Completely different repo than like QMK. So when when you file this JSON file into the via repo, one of the checks is that the QMK firmware has to pass. Um, via itself also can't check that it's perfect because they don't, Via doesn't have all of the boards, but maybe Olivia does, <laughs> you know? So that's the thing, right? That's the thing. Um, if, if someone puts a borked firmware into QMK, hopefully that's been reported and some, and someone out there can, can actually do the fix, but Via and QMK can't actually tell that it's borked. Ghost quickly says, are all Gateron linears the same? No, they are not. All right. So here we go. Let's assume that you actually finished your via JSON file right here. You can also check this up to a certain extent until the next version of via, which you can check all of the layouts. So you should open up via Let's open up via again. You can go to design. Normally you won't have a design tab and I realized that, hold on, let me change my view here. Here we go, let's do this. Oops, still not correct. Here we go, there we go, okay. So normally you won't have a design tab right here. This is something that you enable by going into settings. And you can see that there's a design tab right here. And as you toggle it, you'll see that that design tab disappear. So you wanna make sure that it's on. So you click on design tab, then you wanna click on load. You then want to load. Ah. You then want to load that file that you just created. In our case, it's going to be the one up keyboards file. Let's just look for it right there. You want to load up the one up 60 RGB.json. And if you did this correctly, if you, if you did this correctly, this is what you should see. Right? If you did this wrong, then you are gonna get a whole blob of text saying, oh, you missed a comma here, you missed the, like you missed the right number of columns or you missed the wrong number of columns here and there. So if you get something like this, you know that you made the file correctly. Let's see. And here's the little cool thing that I like about this you can see how bad the board is or how badly routed the board is or not in terms of how all of the switches are connected. The 1UP60 is actually done pretty sensibly. You can see that by clicking on show matrix. See, everything is in a nice row. Everything is in a nice column. Very, very straightforward. However, if you load something like a Let's see, what was the bad one that we saw? I think it was the percent studio board, if I'm not mistaken. 
It goes canoe. If you load up a canoe. Oh! Canoe is fine too, I guess. Let's see. What was the other board that was completely borked? Or. Exclusive. Yeah, here we go. Exclusive. There we go. That's my favorite. <laughs> that is the exclusive 8.5. This is how all the switches are connected. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. That's just... Oh my gosh. And believe it or not, the board works. The board works fine. But this is how everything is connected. <laughs> See, no chance RPGs as if Via is able to tell the difference between two of the same boards plugged in at the same time. Yes, it is, actually. As long as both boards have different um, vendor ID and a different product ID, it should be fine. And I've noticed, because I've been fortunate enough to have two irons plugged into Via, it can detect separate boards that are identical. Can you show something with flex cuts in the PCB? Um, do I have... No, I don't. The only flex cut board that I have is was a customer board and it was in a KBD67 Mark II. I don't have that board anymore. So do... Yeah, I don't think I actually have any boards that are flex, that are flex cutted right now. Droshna says, "What monster designed this? Whoever exclusive um hired to do his PCV." <laughs> this is an exclusive PCV. I wonder if the E7 V1 is done the same. Okay, not bad. The exclusive E7 V1 is actually done sensibly. So I wonder how he went from there to there. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, assuming you've done this all correctly and you have your board flashed with the, with the VIA firmware, Let's see, see, I unplug the board, right? As soon as you plug the board in, as long as you've got VIA open, as soon as you plug the board in, VIA should detect it right away. And of course, it doesn't happen all the time, so sometimes you just need to do it. Unplug, V plug. There we go, see? It's not 100% foolproof. Um, if that ever happens to you, make sure you have a good cable. Unplug, replug it on the keyboard end. Unplug, replug it on the host end, on, on your computer. And hopefully, VIA will eventually detect your board. But here, let me just fix up my layout here. I don't want split backspace. Dubsedon says, 80% of the time, it works every time. Absolutely. <laughs> Took the words out of my mouth. But yeah, that's it. That's how long it takes to, t to to port QMK. Obviously, I've skipped quite a few steps in this process. Just because I can, since the board's already put in into QMK. <laughs> but typically speaking, if you were to do this start to finish, if you had a PCB with no QMK and with no VIA on it, the matrix tracing of a 60%, like if you already know how a PCB should like come together the matrix tracing of a typical 60% should take you roughly 30 to 40 minutes With all the copy and pasting into QMK that should probably take you 15 minutes um, Doing via will take another 30 minutes so add add maybe 15 20 minutes of testing and you will Let's say that's about two two and a half hours just to finish the entire process who knows? Yeah, how Cal says, I just built a Discipline 65. V is working fine, but the media keys aren't registering. That's because the Discipline 65 uses an Atmega 32A microcontroller that at this, at this point on VIA does not support media keys. 
Hopefully in the future it will. Zark says, now Merle needs support the razor he mentioned at the start of the stream. You know, if I were to ever port a razor, that would be pretty cool. How long does it usually take to get a new keyboard supported by QMK once submitted? That really depends on our on our availability. I think at this point there are 15 QMK collaborators, or there's 13 collaborators and two directors. Um, right now, Zark, Drashna, and myself are the collaborators on this stream. Really depends on our availability. It's like personally, I don't do as many PRs these days. Just with the number of PRs that I look at at work, I just don't have the have have the have the desire to look at other pe people's PRs. <laughs> but I'd say g give it a week. Give it a week on the QMK firmware end. I've noticed that things are a bit slower on the VIA end. Um, I've noticed that it takes one to two months for for VIA. On QMK, if it takes one to two months, it's probably because we've noticed something that you're doing a bit odd and are waiting for you to reply back to, or what you're doing is just too odd that we don't want to look at it. <laughs> the Dub Sedan says, ever work with the YD60MQ? Has QMK but no VIA? No, I have not, but if you rewatch this entire stream, especially the VIA portion, or if you watch like my last five other Tuesday streams, you can see how I've done via in each portion of that. And you can do it yourself. Drashna says, I think we have a PR to fix that, but the issue is that VUSB doesn't support enough endpoints. Drashna wants me to check out a PR. Why hasn't keymap.c been able to be converted back to keymap.json? I think we can, right? I think there's a... I think there's a QMK CLI command for that. Let's look really quick. QMK CLI command. There, show you guys what I'm looking at right here. I did QMK dash dash help. I see a JSON 2C, which is keymap.c to JSON file. But you are right, I'm not seeing a key map to JSON. All right, I guess we don't have one. So hold on. I swear I've seen one, but it might be you should try talking with Faux Park. I think Faux Park has one that he hasn't checked in quite yet. Yeah, I think I think he showed me code at one point where he took a keymap C file and he made it into a JSON file. Yeah, there we go. Drashna says I think there was a PR for that. So it's 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 probably in the works, just not not quite official yet. Yeah, so just hold your horses. Hold your horses. Yeah, I I would just look through all of the PRs for it. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think that PR is by Faux Park. Oh look, Zark just posted a link. Let's let's go check it out. The link was, yeah. Actually, it's not from Faux Park, it's from Erovia. There we go. Erovia is another QMK collaborator. And looks like it was filed back on April 15th. There we go. Last comment was 18 days ago. Okay. Well, who knows? Hopefully this will be merged in soon and you will have your keymap.c to QMK configurator JSON file. Vintkey says vintage boards will be saved more in the future then. What do you mean by that?
All right, folks, I think we are done for the night. Started at 7.30, it is now just about 9.30. Two hours to do the whole process. Did take quite a few shortcuts there, but hopefully you guys got the entire process. I still need to redo that that um, entire series that, I, that like I've been hinting at throughout this entire show. Um, Watching a two-hour segment can be quite draining even though I put like the timestamps into YouTube I do plan to finish the series so each part will only take three to five minutes long like the KLE to VIA will take maybe five to ten minutes the actual creating a cr Creating a firmware file will maybe take another five minutes who knows who knows yeah Zark says, Mac Merlin, you must hydrate. I finished drinking it already, unfortunately. And that was about 40 minutes ago. Drashna says, the longest part of PR reviews is that life happens and then 2020 happened. We all do this stuff on our spare time because we are passionate about it. Very true, very true. On average, we get about 30 to 40 boards a month. I think we've hit a thousand boards already at this point, if I'm not mistaken. Can... Can Zark or Drashna confirm that? I think we hit a thousand boards last month. <laughs> no chance RPG says, are there any known hurdles to getting Via to work on the Ergodox Infinity? None that I know of because I am not knowledgeable about the Ergodox Infinity. <laughs> Here, let's just take a look at it really quick. Ergodox. Ergodox Infinity. Apparently there are... Let's go look. Zark says, what's 950? Cool. Okay. Ergodox Infinity has a... It's M... It's microcontroller. It's an MK20... DX256. Okay, I don't know what microcontroller that is. Um, I would say with the knowledge I know about it right now, I would say no. It might not be quite possible at this time. Mainly because in order to get a board into VIA, number one, it needs to be supported in QMK, which this board obviously is. The next thing, though, is that the microcontroller needs to have an EEPROM. That's where VIA stores all of its key maps, which is why you're able to change it on the fly. So if it has no EEPROM, you can't have VIA. Let's see. Zark says 100% not possible because it has 32 bytes of EEPROM. There we go. He answered my question. 32 bytes of EEPROM is not enough to store even one layer of a key map. <laughs> so there we go. There we go. No way to do it. Thank you for con confirming, Zark. And here we go. This is how I found out that information. I just went to the, the rules.mk file. Noticed right away that it was a microcontroller, which I'm unfamiliar with. So, yeah. Best of luck. No way to do it. 32 isn't enough for QMK itself. We're using 34. Oh boy. Okay. There we go. So much for VIA, so much for QMK. <laughs> See, I, I, I'm curious about this board just because I'm very unfamiliar with it. Okay. Interesting. Alright guys, it is 9.30, we are two hours in. We have finished the, the entire porting process, so I think we're gonna call it a night, especially since I've already finished drinking my drink. It's already completely empty, except for a few drops. Once again, I was drinking the Author Mead Co. 
This is draft mead, rosé flavored. Let's see, focus, focus. There we go. Probably, I don't drink this very often because it's expensive. You can buy this for 15 bucks for four cans. That's a lot of money. So this is probably, I've got three more left in the fridge. Maybe I'll save it, save it for another day. Who knows? Who knows? Um, let's see, my next stream will be this coming Thursday. I'll be doing another build prep stream. This coming Saturday, I'll be building a KBD 75. So we'll see what build prep I need to do for that. Most likely it's gonna be lubing of switches. Everyone wants me to, to lube all of their switches these days. Not a problem. <laughs> And the slide says, are you a SWE by day? I used to be, I'm now more of a manager. Zoomwalt says, I paid 115 for 16 cans. Oof, <laughs> expensive. Wow, I'm not sure if I'd ever do that. And on that note, hope you guys have a good rest of your night and I will see you guys all on Thursday evening. Have a good night, have a good rest of your evening and see you next week.